So we start by being told that the acceleration due to gravity, A of t, is equal to negative 32. It's just a constant. All right, so we've got to work our way backwards up to position. So that means we need to integrate both sides with respect to t, not x, because t is our, our, like our x right now. Okay, the antiderivative of acceleration is what? Velocity. Okay, the antiderivative of acceleration is velocity because acceleration is the derivative of velocity. The antiderivative of negative 32 with respect to t would be negative 32t plus c. Here's where you can't leave it off. You've got to include it. Well, that means we need to solve for it. Well, they gave us a piece of information about velocity. They said the initial velocity was 64 feet per second. So that means V of zero is equal to 64. Initial means time is zero. They told it was 64. So 64 is equal to negative 32 times zero plus C. So that just says 64 is our C. So I'm going to plug that in. My velocity function is negative 32t plus 64. Well, I'm not there yet. Okay, right now I'm just at velocity. But what we really want is the position function, so we're going to have to integrate again or anti-differentiate again. Yes, I use those words interchangeably. You don't have to necessarily show it that way. I just write it that way so that if y'all are looking back at it, you know what I did. Okay. What's the antiderivative of velocity? Position. So S of t is equal to the antiderivative of negative 32t would be negative 16t squared. If you need to work that out, that's fine plus 64t plus c. Last step, we've got to solve for that last c. We are told that we have an initial height of 80 feet, so s of 0 is 80. So we set this equal to 80, plug in 0 for t. Well, that's nice and convenient. That just ends up saying 80 is our C. So our position function, S of T, is equal to negative 16T squared plus 64T plus 80. So that's why, how they came up with, if you remember when we did these problems the first go-round, we learned... Um, that the position function was negative 16t squared or uh, negative 4.9t squared if we were in meters plus the initial velocity times t plus the initial height. Um, now, this one was not very difficult to figure out those c's because they give us initial velocity and initial height. There may be a situation where they don't give you the initial velocity. They may say the velocity one second after throwing the ball. Um, then uh, this computation would be just a little bit more involved. Okay, if they gave you the velocity after one second, obviously that doesn't go away. You would actually have to move that number to the other side. Or if they told you the height five seconds after being thrown, again, this would be a little bit more involved. Okay, so there's our position function. Let's use it to answer the question. When does the ball hit the ground? Okay. When does the ball hit the ground? So if we have position and the question is when does it hit the ground, what are we going to do with our position function? Equal to zero. Equal to zero. Okay, so it would equal to zero. So anytime we've got a quadratic and it's set equal to zero, what is our goal? I'll eat a factor, right? Okay, well, right now that looks pretty nasty. Um, but 
I'm pretty sure 16, 64, and 80 are divisible by 16. Are they not? They are. So let's factor out that negative 16. Make this a lot nicer to deal with. Uh, that would be uh, t squared minus 4t minus 5. Now that's a lot nicer to factor, right? <clears throat> so if we factor that out, what is that? t minus 5 times t plus 1. So that says t equals 5 or t equals negative 1. Yes, we got two solutions, but one of them doesn't even make sense. You can't have negative time. So it hits the ground after five seconds. Now, yes, they would expect this to be a calculator inactive question, but right now we do have our calculators. So it might be a good idea to check that and just make sure negative 16 times 5 squared plus 64 times 5 plus 80 and make sure that that does equal zero and it does. Okay, so five seconds. Would be your answer. <sighs> it would be weird. It would be weird because it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier to think about it as just the reverse of derivatives, because the derivative rules are a lot more straightforward. Okay, so.